And Tommy, I brought along a pigeon here. Could you explain to us how you class the, the lockies, the lock pigeons, what you look at, what you go on selection, breeding purposes, and what is good features of a, of a, of a great pigeon. This is, this is the barring cock. Uh, that's bred as winners with numerous hens. He's only a four-year-old cock now. And, and uh, what, what the pigeon? What do you look at? Help us say This particular cock won me the derby. He won, he got me second in uh, special ring in, uh, in the federation where we entered uh, you know, birds that we had to nominate at the beginning of the season. He won me the bar ring, and in so many races, he was actually the, you know, the best bird in my loft on that day. This cock, uh, in fact, I think was one of the very best pigeons I ever owned, because up to date, he has already bred numerous winners. In fact. But Federation winners among the uh, as well. Yeah. yeah, well, look, he did. He bred the man double winner in that day. But uh, I feel that the average, uh, well, in fact, not the average, but a lot of pigeon fanciers, and I've seen this down, I mean, when Boxford Club was really a very, very strong club. What I'm talking about is the years that we were flying Plus minus 14 members every year. This, uh, when I was in the first three in the club or in the first three in the union, averages every year. Now, this particular cock, uh, when, when he actually won, uh, you know, his youngsters actually won the races quite easy. They won me the big races. The races that uh, that really count, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, then uh, he has bred, you know, so many great pigeons, you know, among the birds that I I actually bred off him, and I'm sure that he would actually breed a lot of winners with with different ends. Although I had him mainly mated to two different ends with which he he actually bred bred the winners and that. I know at the moment Leon has got him has had him mated to a, a number of ends which I told him to actually try and mate the birds to. Uh, when I mate, I make sure that there's all relations and and this type of thing. The wing, I feel, uh, should when you're looking at a wing, you look at it, yeah, because that's as far as the pigeon's going to open his wing when he's flying. He doesn't fly with the wing that way, that you get so many fanciers come to your loft and they look at a pigeon and they do this with a wing. Mm. Now, I mean, this, to my mind, is nonsense. I mean, a pigeon doesn't fly with his wing as open as that. Mm. He flies with his oh, wing, yeah? yeah, and that's it. I do believe as well that any pigeon's last three flights, as I'm holding this year now, are all about the same length and they should be, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, look, the as far as the pigeon itself, uh, I know nothing about pigeons' eyes. I know you get so many fanciers who say, "Well, I should be like this, I should be like that." Uh, I don't take any notice of that because I've always had good results with a pigeon that's keel is perfect. Above the keel, you you can you should actually get two fingers in between the keel and and the vent, and uh, that is the way you can judge my pigeons. Uh, what other fanciers do fly very well with birds with only a slight gap. So I think we all use our own opinions as far as that's concerned. But my pigeons, this is what I what I believe. You know, the pigeons should actually have in that day. Look at the, the, the forearm, the shorter of the Man, yeah, I've looked that under here you battled with with this, you battled to get a finger. You 
got it. It's not going to be uh, short. Yeah, it's, so, it's so short. It's, the, the gap is very, very small. You find here that uh, you have the dip, the, yeah, and yeah, you have your dip. That there. Look, for anybody uh, to actually judge his prisons should, in my opinion, uh, handle champions. Now, I know we've uh, got a lot of fences in our club here. In fact, there was one member that used to handle so many pigeons, and yet I never regarded him as a great pigeon fencer, although he did win quite a lot of races in that day. So he must have learned a bit from handling other pigeons in that day. Yeah, great other pigeons. Yeah. yeah. But I actually, because I know nothing uh, about the eye sign and so on, I uh, when, uh, take my birds and uh, the beak, I want the beak to run below the pupil of the eye. And uh, when, it, uh, when it runs through there, you, you find that, uh, well, at least I have found, that a lot of birds race so much better. The gap between the beak and the eye, or at least, should I say, the back of the beak and the eye, very small. On the front of the And, uh, well, look, uh, how do you mean the front of the... So when you... When oh, the front of the eye to, to the beak to itself. The beak, yes. Yeah. Look, uh, this... I like to be very, very small. And uh, then I, I feel that the bird is actually looking over. I, I feel that the beak has got something to do with guiding, you know, like uh, directing the pigeon and so on there. I know he, he's not looking with a beak, he's actually looking with his eye. Yeah. But uh, I am not a pigeon with a so-called eye sign. I've uh, I've never actually taken much notice because 